Hello, this is a tutorial in the use of the Dimensionality Reduction plugin for ImageJ or Fiji. This plugin takes as input either um, a stack of open images uh, or a folder of images upon which it applies one of three standard dimensionality reduction techniques, including um, PC, uh, PC, PCA, TSNI, um, or UMAP. Uh, I should mention that um, this plugin uses uh, several open source Java libraries to achieve um, this. Uh, and I can just briefly introduce you to those now just to give credit to the um, original authors. So we have um, Peter Abels or Abels. Um, efficient Java matrix library implementation of um, PCA for Java. We have uh, Leif Johnson's uh, Java TSNI port of Van der Maarten's and uh, Hinton's TSNI clustering algorithm, I think originally written in Python. Um, and uh, Jesse Paquette, I believe. Yes, Jesse Paquette's um, Java port of UMAP. And I think this project was sponsored by um, a tag bio company tag bio so with that out of the way um, to run this plugin we can access it in um, two main ways so either via the GUI drop down dimension direction and then we can pick one of either PC a TSNI or UMAP or via the macro language um, so first I'll show you the GUI method so um, we can open as an example uh, several uh, the MNIST data set or at least a subset of it so the original MNIST data set is um, about 60,000 28 by 28 pixel hand-drawn numbers um, but just for convenience in this plugin uh, tutorial I will uh, open a subset of just the numbers 0 to 3 um, to open this as a stack we can just drag the folder into image J asked if we want to open this close to 25,000 images to say yes. Um, this doesn't take very long um, and so here we are on a, on a modern computer it's already done. We have here our 28 by 28 pixel um, collection stack of hand-drawn numbers. They're sequentially presented here that's just to do with the order they are in the in the folder. Um, they don't have to be sequentially presented for the dimensionality reduction plugin to work on them, just so you know. With this open, we can go to plugins, dimensionality reduction, pick one of our methods. So in this example, we can we can run UMAP, which is um, a contemporary dimensionality reduction technique used in a lot of, for instance, modern bioinformatics papers. Um, we are asked or given the option here in this dialog to change some parameters. Uh, these are all optional, so it can run with default settings if we don't put anything in these um, boxes. Or, But just to note that for CPU threads to use, this gives us the option of um, parallelization, which can uh, use multiple CPU threads to um, significantly speed up the process. With this number of images, it shouldn't take that long with a single thread. And also, uh, just to note, it's we only get a uh, guaranteed a deterministic result. So we only get the say exactly the same outcome every time if we run one CPU thread. Um, otherwise, uh, there's some randomness built into the the algorithm with multiple threads. That means that the output will be, will vary ever so slightly between runs. But we'll run with eight here. Um, and uh, this option to use a label file, I'll come to in a second. But this allows us to color the the points. Uh, according to some metric, for instance, uh, ground truth, which in this case would be what number you know we intended them to be, or the person intended them to be when they were drawn originally. Um, and if we click OK, we're now asked if we want to uh, run this on the uh, stack that's been identified by the plugin. We'll say yes. Um, for this number of images, so we're like close to twenty-five thousand. Um, this should this shouldn't take very long, so I expect you know within the next I don't know ten seconds for um, our result to be presented to us, and here we go. 
So um, what we see here is a uh, representation, a lower dimensional representation of the original data set presented on two axes, you know, the UMAP uh, one and two axis. Um, and uh, a nice distinction between the original ground truth state, which a human would interpret as, um, as you know, the group zero, group one, group two, and group three. Um, and this is done in, you know, in this blinded fashion. So uh, what can sometimes happen is that, um, I'm, I'm not here to describe the ins and outs of dimensionality reduction or UMAP in particular, just the plugin, but just to, just so you know, what can sometimes happen is that uh, you get more than, um, more or less, but sometimes in this case, for instance, more groups presented or clusters presented on screen. So for instance, you could argue this is a, this is a separate cluster, um, which is actually a feature of UMAP. It's one of its strengths in some way because it allows you, it it's, can sometimes identify subgroups, you know, real subgroups within a data set. But as I mentioned, I'm not describing that uh, right now. Um, what I can show you next is um, this other feature that I intimated at before. So if, again, we'll run UMAP with options. Um, I'll just use that as we did before. But again, remember that because it's not one, the result may not be exactly the same as we saw before. Um, this time, we'll choose to label our um, our data points or color them according to some state that we define. So if we click OK, the first thing that the plugin will ask for is this label CSV file. Um, I already have this ready here, but just so you know the, the format that the plugin expects this to be in, we can go to, um, we can just open it using any piece of software. I've got Excel here. So this data should be presented as a single column with one header cell and each of these are labels, so they just happen to be numeric here, but they could be string text um, with our ground truth state presented here, so what number they were meant to be. Uh, so again, this is sequential, but it really doesn't have to be. Well, the most important thing is that the order of all these labels is the same as the order of the original data, either in the folder or the image stack. So. Um, we don't need that open anyway. So now we can just select this file and click o open. Now we're asked again if we want to run it on the um, stack that's open, we'll say yes. This should take a similar amount of time as before, um, but what we should expect to see now is the um, lower dimensional projection with our individual points colored according to the, in this case, ground truth state. Um, so we'll wait for this and here we go. Um, and that's pretty much exactly what we see. So the coloring here is, it just reflects the label that was present in that file. Um, we can use ImageJ's uh, plot window here, so this isn't a feature of the, the plugin per se, to add our legend. So we just go um, legend, and you, you can see these uh, values, or so in this actually just labels, because they could be strings, were pulled from the file. Um, but we can just say auto here, and voila. So this coloring is random, so occasionally you might get two very similar colors presented on screen. Um, again, I'm not here to show you all the features of image J, but you can just change that by going to content style here, picking your group, um, and then selecting another color. So here this is hexadecimal, but it, it accepts thing, uh, some plain text numbers as well. So here we can change that to red, for instance. Um, just something else to note here that if we click list, again a feature of ImageJ rather than the plugin, um, we get all of these values presented in separate columns. Um, so uh, this is nice because th this is a representation of the crown truth clustering. Um, so what I can show you now is how to run this using the macro language. Um, and I thought I could change the example just to um, again show you the uh, you know like a typical data set that this can be run on. Uh, so I've got here the um, Olivetti face data, which um, I don't know if I remember all the details here. So we've got 400 images, and I think there's 40 images of each person 
no, maybe 10 images of each person. Um, so that would be 40 different people um, with 10 images of each, of, you know, for each of them. Uh, again, this is sequential, but it, it doesn't have to be. So with this image stack open, rather than go down the GUI dropdown now, we'll run, um, we'll use the macro language. So we can select UMAP, but again, this could be TSNE or PCA. Um, we can change some parameters as we did with the GUI dropdown, but here via uh, by specifying them in the in the macro um, arguments um, quotation section. Uh, we can specify a label path. So as before, I've got a label path for the ground truth state of each of these faces. Um, and we could, if I wanted to, uh, introduce other arguments like the number of threads to use and whatnot. I'll just let it default to n threads equal one for this uh, analysis. Um, so with that on screen, um, we can click run. Hopefully this works. Yes, we want to run it on the image tag. And here we go. Voila. So um, I won't go into the interpretation of this, but just to note that the you know this is just UMAP being quite good at being able to distinguish some of the um, individuals from the original set, um, and we can see that maybe by going to content style and just toggling between some of the data sets. So data set one is actually kind of in the cluster in the middle, but for some faces, for instance two, uh, you can see that this one is nicely uh, separated from most other faces, you know, all 10 representations of it in the in the, in the original data set. Um, and now finally, um, even though this video is probably going on a bit longer than I wanted it to originally, I can show you how to run this dimensionality reduction uh, plugin on non-image data. So image data is actually just data. It's just presented in a certain way, you know, to the to the to the user. You know, it's like a structured array of data. So um, for this, uh, we can run the tool on, for instance, um, this traditional machine learning data set, which is the Iris. Uh, data set. So this is, um, I think, 150 flowers, flower instances, um, and four accompanying metrics for each flower. And the idea is that with this, with a particular machine learning or dimensionality reduction technique, we may be able to distinguish between the different flower species based on the um, lower dimensional representation of these. It's only four features, but still. Um, four dimensions. Uh, so to run the tool, this image day tool, on um, this data set, what we first would like to do is just focus on the numeric data and then pull out this column as our label file. So I've done this here. So just using, you know, Excel or whatever. Uh, I've now got just the data in a separate file with the labels in another again in a single column as the plugin expects it to be in. Um, and again, just to reiterate, the most important thing isn't that they're in order, which they are here, but that the um, but that the order of this column is the same as the order of this um, data set. You know. So with this open, the first thing we need to do is rename this to results. Oops, no, let's try again, rename results um, and all this does is allow this table now to become the default image j results table it's just a quirk of image j um, and here uh, we can use these convenience functions I've added to the plugin which allows us to turn this um, results table into an image stack so if we go to results to stack uh, this data has now been encoded in um, this image stack. And each of these pixels, these little squares, is actually this number represented in a 32-bit format. So it should be fairly resilient to, you know, um, very big numbers, uh, decimal numbers, etc. However, what we need to do before we do this is actually transpose this data. 
So maybe counterintuitively, this plugin wants to see each individual instance of an object, you know, of a flower or whatever, as separate columns. At the moment, they represent it as separate rows, which is probably the more conventional um, organization. But um, what I've added is a nice convenience feature to allow us to um, transpose this quickly. So if you go to dimensionality reduction, um, we can use rows to columns. And this quickly, just very quickly, um, has transposed our data now to have each uh, individual instance as a separate column. And now our um, flower properties are, are different rows. With this, we can now go to plugins, uh, dimension reduction, results to stack, and here we go. This stack is now um, the exact format that we want to run our uh, dimensionality reduction tool on. And each of these pixels is actually these numbers encoded. So we don't need our results table anymore. With this stack open, we can now go to um, plugins, dimensionality reduction. Again, pick any tool we want, but you know, for consistency sake for this tutorial, we'll stick with UMAP. And nearest neighbors. So I know Again, this isn't a tutorial in UMAP per se, but I know that there's 50 per group. Um, so we can go for a much higher number here, I think. So let's say like 35. CPU threads to use, um, quite a small data set. I, you know, let's just go with one and keep it deterministic. Label file, yes. And we can use our iris labels, which again was just that original column. Click OK, do I want to run it on the stack? Yes. And here we go. Um, I mean, if you Google uh, UMAP iris dataset, this is a very similar output to what we would normally see. Um, and just very briefly, I can add my legend as before. Here, it's pulled this from the file. So this is why all these labels are here already. And we can see that um, we have adequately or fairly nicely um, clustered our original dataset just on the lower dimensional representation of those four original flower parameters. So this is a fairly lengthy, uh, apologies for that, tutorial in the use of the dimensionality reduction plugin for ImageJOFiji applied to both image and non-image data. Um, thank you for listening.